This event happened to me about two months ago. The event, and those involved, never officially resolved. I now know that this was a stupid decision on my part, and although I probably won't stop hacking anytime soon, nor will I quit using the deep web or Tor to access it, I will, never again, attempt to take another hacker's work, because, as I learned, that is not a good idea, no matter how skilled you may be. To give you some backstory, I'm a 17-year-old male, currently a senior in high school. Ever since my freshman year, I took a real interest in coding, which led me quickly down the road of computers to hacking. Through my high school career, I became quite skilled in writing script, coding, and programming. This allowed me to make the internet my personal playground. By the end of my junior year, I was so well known in my school for hacking that I usually made a monthly visit to our IT office, where they would usually accuse me of some website I had tampered with or a student I had pranked, but there was never enough evidence for them to do anything. I eventually started to get paid for writing script for others or hacking into accounts or locked folders, and eventually, I became bored with this and started exploring new ways to become better and more powerful. I had known of Tor for a long time and had even used it once or twice but had never really thought of it as a tool for hacking. This all changed in my senior year though in high school and I began exploring more and more into Tor and the deep web. It was full of opportunity and tools I could use to take my hacking to a new level. One of the things I enjoyed most was the utter lack of censorship and government monitoring along with the anonymity. I was nonetheless careful though, always running tails and disabling my flash player and scripts. Tor provided me with a hacker's breeding ground. There were forums where I could learn from other hackers and a whole unrestricted lot of sites which you could tamper with or hack with no backlash as long as you knew what you were doing. And I did. Wanting to continue to expand my capabilities of hacking, I set about to build a botnet, which for those of you who don't know, is a collection of computers under the control of a hacker, remotely, without the owner's knowledge. It was about a month into my use of Tor and the deep web for hacking, when I set out to build a botnet. With what seemed like a miracle, I stumbled upon a site on the deep web titled Botnets for Rent. Now, I knew I would never rent one, as that would cost far too much, but maybe I could steal one, I thought. Before this, all I had done on the deep web was hack and take down illegal and perverted sites I stumbled upon for practice. But stealing a botnet was a whole new level. I knew it could be done, but I just wasn't sure I could do it. At first glance, it seemed like an impossible task, far too complicated for me. But after a week of intensive prep and research, I was ready to move. I took my laptop to the public library one Tuesday after school, and I hooked it up to their internet connection and booted up Tor, making sure I was taking all the precautions to protect my identity. Within five minutes, I was on the site that contained my target botnet. I had carefully selected what looked like a weak target. It was a very small botnet with a hacker owning it that seemed not to know too much about the trade and seemed like a perfect, easy target. I set about my work, and soon enough, I was home with a brand new botnet. After about a week of using the botnet for various purposes, it suddenly wasn't there anymore. I no longer had the controls. The Trojan virus I had been using to control the computers in the botnet was gone. It was as if it had never been on my computer in the first place. It was weird, but I dismissed it as something that I'd done wrong, and I just lost it. That night, I was texting my friends about our plans when I got a message from a hidden number. It read, I found you. Irritated, thinking it was one of my brother's friends pulling a prank, I texted back. The conversation went like this. I found you. Fuck off. I wouldn't say that if I were you, that is, if you value your computer. I don't know who you are, but I know my brother put you up to this, so for the last time, fuck off. 8, 8, C, 7, 2, E, 3, 6, Y, 6, 4, 1, J. How the hell did you know my computer password? 
I am not here to discuss details, but instead to warn you. Never mess with things again, or you will wish you had never been born. And don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Lucky for you, I was able to retrieve my botnet. After this, I didn't reply. I didn't know what to do. It wasn't like I could call the cops. Botnet were illegal in the first place, so stealing one was definitely a problem and something the cops wouldn't take kindly to. I decided the best course of action was to just ignore the hacker and beef up my computer security. About four days later, I got curious though and decided I wanted to know who this guy was. That night, I attempted to trace his computer as I still knew where the botnet site was. After some digging, I was able to pull his IP from a message he had posted to the chat feed on the site. After some more work, I traced him back to an address I won't disclose, but I'll say it was in northern Canada. After finding this and looking into who the owner could be online for about an hour, I came up empty handed. I wrote down the address and I closed my laptop deciding to figure it out later. Two days went by with no further progress into who the person could be. It was Friday afternoon and the final bell had just rung to let school out. I was walking down the hall talking to my best friend when my phone it lit up. It was a call from a hidden number. Instantly I must have looked shocked because she asked if I was okay. I said yeah and that I had to take this. I answered and said hello. For a second, there was no reply. Then, all of a sudden, I heard a voice say, Tracking me, huh? That might not be too good for your health. Then, he started to read off what at first seemed like random letters and numbers, until it hit me. He was reading my license plate number. I suddenly took off running for the student parking lot. My best friend who had been watching my panic build the entire conversation took off after me to see what was up. I'm a cross country runner and I reached the lot in no time. As I approached my car at a sprint, I saw a deep green car all of a sudden peel away. I unlocked my car and floored it out of there after this car. My friend watched me fly out of the parking lot in pure confusion. Now, even though I made it out of the parking lot quite fast, there were already several cars between me and the green car, and he slipped away without a problem. Irritated, I drove home. As I parked my car, I got out and I noticed something. There was a note that had been sitting on the window under the wipers. It read, This is your last chance to stop snooping. Under this, it had my address, phone, and all my passwords to various websites and social media accounts. I was stunned, but more angry than anything. That night, I had a long talk trying to explain to my friend what had happened. She urged me to tell someone, but at this stage, it had gone too far, and I knew law enforcement, they wouldn't help, and neither would my parents. I decided to stop digging, and I revived no more harassment. It's been two months now, and nothing has happened. Now, I know I was technically the instigator in this situation, and I know that some people may view hacking as wrong, but still, that was quite a scary experience. I'm at least glad that the person, whoever he may have been, had at least some morals not to take things any further than that. However, I still wonder, what was he hiding so much that he would go to that extent to stop my prying? It doesn't make any sense because it was just a simple botnet. In my mind, there has to be more, a lot more, but I guess I'll never know. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. And you know what? I really don't enjoy computer jokes, not one bit. Get it? Bit as in computer bit? <laughs> I guess that one was for the tech savvy, right guys? <laughs> ah well. <laughs> uh, thanks again to the Hive member that bravely shared their story for us all here. And I hope you're doing well. 
I further chance to have your story feature in a video, you can send your story to my email which is in the description below. And as always, keep them coming guys as this channel relies upon your stories to continue. Also, please do me a favour and just state in your email what your story is about in the description and also provide me with a short written statement of consent just so that I can be above board with everything. And please change any names if you don't want particular names to be shared. As always guys, it would be awesome if you could like, share, comment and subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for updates throughout the week. You can also catch me on my second channel, all of which have links in the description below. Thanks for always tuning in and for all the love and support and I'll see you mates in the next one.